Hey, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, today we are working on, uh, well, we've got needles, we've got yarn. This is our knitting day. And um, I'm talking about weaving in, in the ends. And um, some of it could apply to crochet, but it's definitely um, looking at needle samples, uh, swatches. So if you're a loom knitter or a needle knitter, um, this will apply to you because I'm not actually showing any needles or looms. So <laughs> um, we're just gonna talk about some things. Um, my lighting is so bright today. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about some things and show a couple of samples. I hurriedly tried to grab some of these samples because I was asked about this just yesterday. So if you're on the replay, be sure and ask me a question and uh, I'll try and get back with you later. Just write replay and write your question. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to say hello to a few people while everyone's hopping on here. Uh, good morning, everyone. I saw Chris hopping on and Bridget and Marie and Brandy. Hey, good morning. Hey, Marie. Um, oh my goodness, y'all. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> like, great. I get on camera, I'm going to sneeze. Anyway, it took me a moment to hop on because I was trying to get samples. So I've been um, putting some, uh, getting some different things uh, <laughs> set up. I, they're the craziest bunch of samples I've ever seen. Um, I actually have this giant bag of my swatches. I have no idea where I put it. No idea. I, I, I'm like, I think what I did, actually I do have an idea. I think I stuffed it way in the back underneath my stairwell for storage. <laughs> and so I just grabbed some randomosity <laughs> right before here and a bunch of different um, needles to show you guys how um, I would weave in ends. And I'm just gonna show it with um, like a brighter yarn. It's totally not the appropriate weight, but just to kind of demonstrate very um, wildly <laughs> the samples. So if I make a YouTube video of this, it'll definitely be a little more um, uh, <laughs> clean. <laughs> like every sample will be the same color. And then I'm like, okay, there's this type and this type. So anyway, while I rattle on, I'm gonna say hello again. <laughs> Everybody hopping on. Um, Good morning, y'all. Hey, Mickey and Heather, Tracy, Litsa. Hey, and Grease, how are you? <clears throat> Heather says Mikey is live right now. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> come over to the dark side, or come over to the lighter side. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So I have no idea. I don't even like pay attention to who's on live. I guess I should have paid attention to who's on live at the same time. Share it. Share my share this and see if anybody wants to come on over. <laughs> we're gonna look at um, we're gonna look at weaving in tails. Um, I've got the uh, inside of a hat here. I'm gonna talk about um, like a jog and a hat. Um, I'm even gonna weave in some tails on this drop stitch uh, that has a garter on it. Um, I'm gonna look at a stocking net and we're gonna weave it on the back, even though it's real goofy. Um, and then I've got some ribbing which is a goofy one too. I got some ribbing on here, which is hard to see, but at least I can kind of demonstrate and you'll see it once I put in the um, the accent. So I'm hoping showing a ribbing and a garter and a reverse stockinette and showing the hat. That should give pretty good variety on um, weaving in those tails. So um, anyway, um, let's see. Tracy, love my hat. Thank you so much. It's from my brand new book. Um, this is a version of it. Um, this is actually kind of a, a bigger, uh, a more intermediate version, which is not actually in the book. Um, the, the book is just a solid, but it has this really cool swirl flower. I don't know if you could see that, but the swirl flower is in here. See that? And it uses this oh, yummy alpaca yarn, I'm telling you. Oh my gosh. Simply Cree, uh, S-I-M-P-L-Y-C-R-I. -I. Um, anyway. <laughs> It's amazing, baby alpaca, just saying. Um, anyway, I do wanna tell you guys, um, there had to be a date change when I will be on the Annie's Facebook page live with Beth Ham talking about the book and uh, that was supposed to happen this um, coming um, uh, the 27th, but um, someone has a family member in the hospital and they have to like help them with this, you know, anyway. So they, um, they're like a pre-planned surgery thing. So anyway. Not gonna happen on the 27th, but March 7th, I'll be live on the Annie's Facebook page with Beth Ham. It will be at my house. We probably will be set up a little different 
Um, but we'll be, we'll be doing some tutorial. We'll be Q and A, and it'll be eleven thirty Central Standard Time. Okay. Um, hey Ada, good morning, sunshine, and all your girls. <laughs> hey Heather, you were watching him, and you jumped over to me. Oh, I feel privileged. Yeah, I noticed that my numbers are kind of down, like um, like the how many people live are on, but that's okay. My my core my core peeps are here, man. Y'all some love here. <laughs> um, Debbie, good morning. <laughs> hey Becky, your PA is it Pennsylvania? Yeah. Uh, Marie, any ideas on what would be easy while I go in for surgery later in the week? Uh, things to work on. Things to work on. Um, you know, just small. Small things, you know, cozy cup, cozy, and a little uh, easy breezy scarf that's not too, not too hard. Uh, maybe a a triangle shawl that just keeps increasing, just with yarn overs at the beginning. Um, you could always do that. Um, those are simple, you know, something small. Um, <laughs> you know, like something with like a thin, like a lace weight, but you use a chunkier needle on. You could do that, um, or a, a chunkier loom. Uh, hey, Minnesota, Amber. You, uh, sm snow's coming through Friday. Oh my gosh. Everybody's been so back and forth on the weather this week. Oh my word. Um, thanks for sharing my video. Um, okay, Chris. Wow, Amber, another... Uh, what? Chris uh, says another emergency declared flooding in California. It's crazy. Yes, it's so crazy. Hey, Lorna and Rebecca. Debbie. Okay, has to be crafty because... Um, <laughs> Debbie says my advice has to be crafty because you don't give out medical advice lol unless you played one on TV I played a doctor on TV so I'm gonna give out medical advice no no I'm gonna give advice on a yeah doctor yarn says <laughs> what does the doctor say <laughs> you jumped over as well <laughs> thanks thanks Mickey hey Crystal you were watching Mickey too oh I mean, Mikey. I said Mickey. <laughs> Mikey. Uh, y'all are sweethearts. I love y'all. <laughs> Great scarf. You can do French. Let's see. So what are we working on today? Crystal says. Okay, sorry. I'm all back and forth on these comments. They just, they bump up and then it... <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, all crazy. Everybody's talking about the weather. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Yarn. <laughs> Dr. Who? No, no, no. I mean, not Dr. Who, Dr. Yarn. Um, okay, <laughs> so we're talking about weaving in tails, these pesky tails. We also, we talked about yesterday, um, actually was it, I'm not sure, I did a Facebook Live in the morning yesterday, and then I did a YouTube Live in the afternoon, and I can't remember which one it was, but some of it was like, yes, do a live thing on weaving in tails. I think it was on Facebook Live, so I figured I'd just do an impromptu one. I did not plan it. I did not rehearse myself or <laughs> anything. Um, so, <laughs> oh, Tracy, you're so sweet. Flattery will get you everywhere. She says, who would watch anybody uh, <laughs> besides you? You're the best. Oh, my goodness. You're so sweet. <laughs> I do what I do, honey. I just do what I do. And if people like it, then they like it. If they don't, uh, they, they don't. <laughs> hey, Becky, she says, I knew, I'm knew i new to the knitting board looming uh, Afghan loom made a blanket. Can't cast off to finish. Is there a video you have to show that I may finish my blanket? Help, please. Yeah, I've got videos on casting off. Um, yeah, there should be bind off video playlists on YouTube. So, youtube.com slash goodknitkisses. And don't go to the search bar at the top. Go to the search bar um, further down where the, um, where the um, tabs are and just type bind off. Um, I don't say cast off um, because g that's generally a UK term, but you can write cast off. I think most of my videos now say bind off. Um, and then, but, or you can click in the playlist and find the playlist that says, um, you know, loom knitting bind off or something like that. So yes, I have videos on that. Um, you can use a basic bind off, a stretchy bind off. I would look for the, um, chain one bind off. That is best. Now, if you're working in a flat panel, otherwise you're going to want to do the double knit bind off. 
Um, yeah, Crystal hates tails. By the way, if you have, if double knitting, if, you're, if your knitting is double knitting, it makes it super simple. Um, I'm not even going to show it, but um, if you have, um, if you have a knitting that is, um, uh, got one side, you know, stocking net and the other side stocking net, let's just for simplicity sakes, double knit, very simple. You can just take your tail and weave it on in the inside generally and then kind of weave it back in on self and kind of find the middle and do that. And it's usually just trapped in pretty good. Um, it doesn't really need that much attention. Um, when you're, um, when you're working, um, you can, you can just kind of tuck them in as you work and those tails stay in pretty good. Um, they don't really go anywhere. Um, <clears throat> but the, um, the knitting, um, uh, flat panel, you definitely want to address the tails. Now, you can, if you're working on a wearable and it's something like that goes and it hides on the inside, many times people, you know, like this is the inside of a hat. Here's the outside. Here's this little hat I did a while back and I never did much with it. This is the outside of the hat. So on the inside, you know, these are the tails, right? <clears throat> so I've got the top, I've got um, where I connected the colors. Um, I think I already, yeah, I had already done the beginning tail, but then the connected colors, I left these tails long. And so you want to address those and then close any gaps. Um, so yeah, so you want to, you want to make sure that, um, they get, um, like, so this is kind of a lace work. It's kind of an open stitch pattern here. So you want to make sure that that tail isn't actually going to be poking through there. Um, and it kind of goes, um, uh, to the either side. But something like a scarf or something is definitely going to be seen. So if I put a bad t weaving tail in here, it's going to be seen. The other thing is you don't want it to come out. Now, if it's wool, um, it's going to be more grabby. If it's a natural fiber, um, an animal fiber really is what I should say. An animal fiber is going to grab onto um, another one. So you can have like a short tail. It's it's okay. But you really want to have about four inches or so um, you could go longer if it's something that's um and now even if it's a natural fiber like a cellulose or something like that like silk or um uh what's another what this goes um cotton even um you want a longer tail um i'm not going to address the cotton one there's a couple of different ways you can do that because those can come undone and you might actually need to put a knot in the cell cellulose type now on acrylics, you, you just need a long tail and weave it in the way I'm going to show you, um, acrylics and blends. So, excuse me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to scroll up before I start showing anything. I want to make sure if I have any questions I need to get before. It's just easier for me this way. Um, uh, Mickey says you have, uh, videos to learn how to crochet. Yes, I do. Um, I actually have, um, some of my own videos and some of Mikey's. So like kind of the building block videos. Um, uh, if you go to youtube.com slash goodnit kisses, go to the playlist, there's a crochet playlist. And I think there is a beginner crochet playlist too. Um, the crochet playlist has a ton of crochet, um, uh, stitches and stuff. And I may have, when I started it, I may have put all the kind of, I like to do, okay, so Actually, it's funny. Mikey and I were chatting yesterday, just yesterday, um, about this. Um, we do like Facebook Messenger messages, <laughs> and uh, we were just chatting. And um, he said that, um, like his playlist um, have more like the he's got trends and stuff. Mine are very much like when I create a playlist. Many times, um, I create them more um, as a building block of learning. So if you go to my beginner playlist, beginner, beginner loom playlist, or my beginner crochet playlist, the first video that's up at the top, uh, or first set of videos, those are kind of the first ones that I think that would be best for someone learning. Now, you can clearly skip around if you're at different levels and stuff, but I kind of put them in sort of that order um, in case someone is just a brand new beginner and they're like, I don't know where to start and all this is confusing. So I try and approach it from like the beginner level of would you be confused? Now, not all of my playlists are like that, but especially the beginner ones. Um, but Mikey and I have uh, videos on each other's channels. Um, 
he has proportionally way more videos now, so mine uh, there's not very many of mine on there. I have some illuminating on his, and he has some uh, crochet on mine. So he's got some great crochet videos. I have some. Um, if you want to try a whole blanket as a beginner project, it just works mainly with a double crochet and a single crochet. It's called the Marshmallow Crochet Baby Blanket, and many people have really enjoyed it, and it works with the Burnett Baby Blanket yarn. It works with this stuff here. And um, it's it's really great. Um, I like it because I, I use that one all the time myself um, for um, giving to Embrace Grace. So that's my thing. Um, Chris says, yesterday morning is when we talked about weaving in ends. Thanks, Chris. Tracy, uh, yeah, so right. You rock, girl. That's what Bridget says. That's right. Tell it, Tracy. <laughs> Giving Chris some, like, attitude in her... I said, tell it. She didn't even say tell it. She just says, that's right, Tracy. Thumbs up. <laughs> you learned so much from me, Stephen. Thank you. Hammer Catherine says, if you don't like it, you put them in a timeout. <laughs> yeah, YouTube yesterday, I had to put somebody in a timeout. I didn't even like, I didn't even like uh, acknowledge him. He just kept like hitting this thing and I was like, whatever. So... <laughs> Oh, Tracy, love watching you. The highlight of my day. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, <laughs> Alicia says, love the many voices of the people that you do. <laughs> my impressions. I think that's what she means. I'm not very good impressionist, but I'm hammy. Mm. So... <laughs> You hate when your tail pops out of your project. Okay, great. We're, we're going to get to that in a second. You plan your day around my videos? Marie... Thank you. They're so sweet. Well, um, I hope I hope that I uh, am always entertaining at some point and you learn something in the middle of all that. So not just entertaining. Chris, um, hey, that discussion about weaving in ends prompted me to pull out several projects and finish them yesterday. <gasps> oh, oh, yay. That's so great. And finish them. It's ridiculous. They literally have been sitting for months. Oh, yay. So what I said yesterday, if you didn't join me, I was discussing how weaving entails, and I gave some tips and some things I'm going to show you, share with you now, but I'll show you. Um, I was saying that, you know, if you, like, say you want to go to, like, a knitting circle or group or something, you're like, I don't know what to do. Bring your projects, especially if you haven't seen them in a while and you want to, like, be chatty, right? You don't want something super complicated. Um, bring all your projects that are that you need to weave in your tails. Make it an enjoyable experience. If it's a coffee, a tea thing, bring your coffee tea. If it's a wine thing, bring your wine. Bring your tails. Man, bring it to a wine one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but that, that makes it more enjoyable and that way you don't feel like it's such a chore. And then um, you can just kind of mess around with it. And if you don't like how you did it, you can always undo it and redo it. But you're not having to like super think hard about it. So... Um, and feel like you're just exasperated. So um, anyway, I'm so happy for you. Uh, um, that's awesome, Chris. <laughs> um, Christy, um, Christy Lee says she's looking for a simple step-by-step -step pattern for Granny Square. It must be crochet. Please and thanks. Um, I have a crochet. I have a motif. Well, it's not some. I have a hexagon step-by-step um, -step, literal um, learn how to read a pattern. Um, there's a leisure arts book and I was able to pick out something and there's this, um, Amish, um, square. It's not a granny square, but, um, anyway, but learning how to do like a motif and then you join, join the motifs. So if you want to look on something small and you have like a literal step by step by step, I actually show how to read the pattern and that might actually be helpful for you as far as even just learning something. So if you want something like that, which might encourage you when you pick up any other kind of granny pattern, um, to do stuff. This one's actually hexagon. And, um, so yeah, you might, you might consider that. Um, if you, um, go to goodknitkisses.com slash, I'm sorry, if you go to youtube.com slash goodknitkisses, go down to the second search bar, not the top one, but by playlist. If you'll type in the search bar, um, how to read a pattern, um, there will be, um, some crochet patterns and some knitting patterns. And I show literally in the book, cause leisure arts had given me permission. I show how to read the pattern and how to actually do it. And then we also go through, um, like a dishcloth as well on crochet. Um, <clears throat> Katie says, hi, hi, Katie, Jennifer. Hello, Lori in Wisconsin, Robin. Hey, Robin. Saw you jump in. 
Stephanie says, the biggest problem. Thanks for showing me the right way. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, Robin, did you miss the tails? No, you haven't missed the tails. I was waiting for it to start. Okay, so I'm about, I'm, I'm literally about to start. I'm just kind of scrolling through real quick. So, um, you had to reboot your computer. Sorry. Hopefully it's working now. Okay. All right. Um, so, oh, hey, Maurice. Oh, okay. Uh, Marisi, she has, on here, Bucinet, she has been so amazing, y'all. I want y'all to give her a hand. She has, um, she's been taking my videos that have closed captioning, and she's been making them in French and translating them to French um, for Canadians. So our French Canadians, um, and if you're French, I'm sure it's really close, but I mean, I can't check it. Oh my gosh, my high school French is archaic. <laughs> uh, I can say on to toi. I can count. I can do the alphabet, and I can do a couple of songs. <laughs> but I am not. I am not well versed in French anymore. Um, I don't even think I was a very good student then. <laughs> but I am so appreciative of you because, anyway, that has been something that I have been really wanting to do. So anyway, y'all give uh, her some love, and um, anyway, thank you so much, Nora. Um, Shelly Saluma hat. It looks good on your head. Oh, and your family doesn't make fun of you? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Um, oh, Lisa says, are you going to record music again? Oh, yeah, there's the hearts for you, girl. Um, am I going to record music again? Oh, um, I'll answer that a little bit later, but I'm sure I will. I'm waiting on this video synchronization license so I can do my um, the, video, the ones that I've recorded, and I'll do like a little music video. I already have permission from a store, a local store to do the video in. So I'm excited. I just, I we're waiting on permission from one more. Um, uh, I think it's BMI, uh, the, the people who do uh, music, like different producers and stuff. I think like Epic records have given us permission and some other stuff. So, uh, anyway, uh, all right. Just scrolling through. Okay. I'm going to skip the questions that aren't really related to this just for a moment and maybe I'll have to come by to it later. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Thank you, Maurice. Okay. Um, Maurice, I think I'm saying that right. Maurice, Maurice, I probably, that's probably the better way to say it. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to work on this and hopefully I'm not like, ah, and mess up. <laughs> Usually I'm like kind of doing this on my own. I don't have anybody like watching me. Um, okay. Yes, I do have videos, Marie, on joining Granny Squares. Um, you'll just have to like type in the word join or joining on my channel, like down in that second search bar. So that's the best way on anybody's channel. If you go to their main channel page and you know they teach on knitting or crochet or whatever you're interested in, don't use a search bar at the top, y'all. Go down where the playlists are and type it in the search bar there. Now, if you're on a um, if you're on a mobile device, type in your keyword and then type in the name of the channel that you really want to focus on finding the thing. But I would recommend a desktop or laptop for specific stuff like that. So okay. All right. Oh, I want to address something really quick. Someone just said this is, has to do with weaving in. Okay, Jackie said my favorite thing you showed us a while back was using the latch hook. Jackie, I think the latch hook is going to be fine for crochet. But on the knitting stuff, I don't think it's fine anymore. Um, I have learned some better ways and... Um, and also the ways that I'm going to show you now will keep the stretch of the yarn and you're not going to like lose the elasticity. So like say, say this um, knit is, a, cause this is a ribbing, so it's going to be stretchy, right? But if you, have you ever woven in your tail and then you're like, now this part doesn't stretch, but this part does. Have you ever had that happen? Um, yeah, so definitely um, uh, I want to show you the, the better way to get that, um, to keep the stretch and even then like, like a garter stitch, you know, you want it to stay the stretchy that it's supposed to be and, and a reverse stocking net or a stocking net. So, um, anyway, I think there are better ways. Okay. I'm going to flip this camera. Okay. Pardon me while I adjust. Y'all just talk amongst yourselves. Get a topic. Hairless pets. Discuss. I'll give you a topic. Peanuts. 
They're neither a pea nor a nut. Discuss. <laughs> Animal fiber. To pet or not to pet. To smell or not to smell. <laughs> yes, I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> Uh, getting my samples. Okay, so I've got a few of these here. All right, these are the needles that I'm using. I've just got a few different ones here. Um, I've got this tapestry needle here. Um, I don't know what happened to in the move. I cannot find my bent needle. Um, I'm still finding stuff y'all um, but this tip here like you can actually get what's really nice is there's ones that have like an extra little bend in the needle right here and so those are really good for weaving in the ends because you can pick up the stitches really well so um, but I like the metal ones because they don't break but if you're a loom knitter you've gotten these plastic ones before um, I really like the one that comes with the Martha Stewart loom so this is great for like that really super bulky or even like a number seven yarn I mean hello look at that I mean, look at the size of that. That's huge, right? This one's pretty good, though. See, this metal one is very comparable. This one's just a little bit wider, but this comes from the Martha Stewart uh, kit. Martha Stewart loom uh, net and weave kit. I think that's the official name. So, okay, so I'm going to show you the type, of, the type of things that I've got here. So, this is a stocking net. Okay, this was a cast on. Now this is like a thick and thin kind, okay? It doesn't, it's not all consistent. It's just what I had on hand. It's, these are like a randomosity due to the quickness of this video. Um, this, these are your knit stitches here. This is a stocking net. The back is a reverse stocking net. So it's gonna be all, um, it's gonna be all purl stitches. The technique that you use for a stocking net, you use it on the reverse. And the technique that you use for a garter stitch is the same so this one right here is stocking it and then I have some drop stitches so you would want to it's like say you had a tail that was right here and you were changing yarn on the drop stitches you would want to kind of weave up your stitch and get it like say it ended here and you want to um, get it all the way up to here you would kind of weave into this area and then you would work on your um, weaving in your tail in here there, there's no reason why you would want to put it in this loose open area right so you want to pick your area. So it's okay to kind of go through loosely to an area and then um, skip over a difficult open spot and then start weaving in. So that's just a general tip there. Um, like say you have a, um, let's say you have like a washcloth and you have this real pretty decorative edge or a baby blanket or whatever, this decorative edge, and you've got this tail on the end, right? Um, you would want to, oh, by the way, this looks weird because this is just a provisional bind off. These are live stitches here. So <laughs> that's why it looks weird. Um, so if I had a, um, if I had a decorative edge on here, I would want to get this tail all the way inside to the main area before I start really working in that tail. Okay. Don't try and put it along the edge. It's just going to pop out or it's going to look bulky and you're not going to like it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, oh, Chris, you haven't woven in your tails for that knit along? Oh, man, yeah, you got to do that, girl. Okay. Oh, um, I think the bed needle one from Clover is in a little tube for storage. Yeah, I think it is. You're right. I don't know where that tube is right now. Um, okay. Hey, Joanne, I see you jumped on. Okay, this one is a um, stocking knit cap, and then I have like a ribbing on the edge, and then I have this um, diamond lace stitch here so like say we this is the same thing that I was talking about right here when you're weaving in your tail you're gonna want to skip over areas like that and then weave it into um, other areas like especially if you can jump over something like this and weave it into the back of a stocking net so like say here I'm gonna flip this over we'll work on this one first because it kind of covers the gamut and what a lot of people would want to see um, so let me get my needle here okay so um, I want to talk about jogs real quick. Um, people were asking me yesterday, how do you join the yarn? Well, you don't need to, to put a bunch of knots in because it's just going to create a hard spot. Um, I just leave the tails long and then I'm able to like cross them over. I had, I had actually crossed them over when I started. And then um, these are, there's no gap here. 
See that? But if I did have one, um, I would take it and, um, oh, I already, I already um, wove that in. I already wove in one of them. You can't even see it. Isn't that nice? So I had like another, I had this, this tail up here and you can't even see it. Um, so what I did was when I crossed, um, when I was uh, switching my colors here, um, I was, um, what I do is I, I get my color and then I twist it and then I start working this color this way and then you leave enough uh, gap here and then this creates this little ladder up. So anyway, if you leave the tails loose, you can close in any of these gaps. So now I'm gonna do is um, weave this one in. Let's see. This one's harder because it's the white. Actually, I'm going to show you what I would have done that way. That actually, this will be good. I'm going to weave this one in here to show you what I would have done with the blue, and then you'll really see it because it's white. This is that thick burnout blanket yarn. Oh, y'all, my, my tripod is being weird on me. Hold on. It was like starting to move. <laughs> okay. It was like moving on its own. <laughs> Okay, so um, you've got in this these stitches, you have these um, parts here that you've got an umbrella. Um, I've, I've learned this a while back, um, but these shapes kind of resemble an umbrella or like a smile. And so you can go up through a couple of these umbrellas and kind of start. Um, so I'm going to go up this direction and I'm going to pull up through uh, an umbrella. An umbrella. See, yeah, that's an umbrella. Umbrella, umbrella. This is thicker yarn. I'm gonna just get it up to here. Okay. So I'm going up all the way up to here. Okay, and now um, I started at this umbrella and I'm gonna go um, down into, um, go follow this around, down through this, what's called a smile. We'll go down here like this and then angle over to, um, uh, hang on. I'm gonna angle over to this uh, little smile here. And then I'm gonna go up. Whoops, I went the wrong way. I may do this on the garter stitch because I'm having a hard time holding on this hat here. Hold on. Basically, what you do is you end up weaving it. You know what those Christmas candies are that make this like zigzag, like this this thing. So you actually end up following it along. And um, I'm gonna go. Let's see, go down through a smile and down to this umbrella. There it is. Okay, so get, went down through an umbrella, and then I'm gonna follow this curve around this little smile curve. Follow it around and go up through this umbrella, and then through a um, um, okay, so I went up through there, and then I'm going to go up through here, this little smile. So up through an umbrella and up through a smile. And so it brings me back around like this. And then I'm going to follow it around this little umbrella area, okay, down through the umbrella, and then back down, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, down through this smile area, and then down through this umbrella and so it all goes back to I've got a short tail so anyway you see how like now I'm making this loop de loop around here like this and then I'm gonna go follow around this little smile area okay and then I'm gonna go back to uh, here okay Okay, so do you see how what I'm doing is I'm zigzagging around and it's it's leaving it nice and stretchy, okay? Now, I can see it on this side, but this is how I would do it in the stitch. Uh, this is how I would do it in the, um, uh, in the same color here, okay? So that's just to show you what I had done. Uh, I was trying to avoid this area because this is where I had actually done the blue before, but you didn't see it. So let me just kind of pull it out to prove it. I already have this tail in here. I mean, you can't even see it. Does that make sense? 
anyway but when you're working with the same color it can hide um, I'm actually um, I went for a little further back but there is a tail in here and you really can't see it the blue um, because there because I had to have this tail that went up here so um, this one here would do the same thing I would just get it down off of the crown to do the same thing so like say I'm up here I can just work my way down okay so I work my way down here maybe get it to where I'm comfortable especially if I have a nice long tail I'm just gonna go all the way down okay so um, you're gonna want to work all the way you're just basically following these lines all the way around it's really hard to see though you'll probably can't even tell um, uh, with the same color so let me just I'll probably just move on or you want me to show you in the yellow on the same one actually let me see if I can work on this one we'll do the red and I'll do a yellow it's the wrong color It's the wrong color, so you'll see it, but it's the wrong weight, so I don't know if it'll, I don't know if that'll look, look as well, but at least you'll see the color. Why is there an angry face? I just saw an angry emoji. Okay, <laughs> so this is the garter stitch, and um, we're going to go through, uh, I'm just going to kind of pick a place here. Um, let's go down. I'm going to put it at, do a start at an angle here. You would worry about not having a knot. You don't need, yeah, but you don't need a knot on, especially on like animal fiber, you can totally do this. Um, and then also on um, acrylic. So if your tail is long, like if you've got four or six inches, you know, 10 centimeters or more, then um, then you're fine. So I'm gonna go down through, okay. Do y'all see more clearly here, right here, the C, there's a, um, what looks like an umbrella, okay? it's like this, like an eyebrow. You got an eyebrow and a smile. Why don't we just say that? Eyebrows and smiles, okay? Here's your lips. So I'm gonna go down through this um, eyebrow and down through a smile, okay? Leave, uh, this is coming from wherever that stitch was, even if I had to work my way over here. Okay, so now what I want it is, um, I'm going to uh, go, uh, Let's see, up through, up through this, um, up through this uh, smile here, and then we're going to go back through this. Okay, so I go up through this eyebrow, and then up through this smile, and then I'm going to follow it around. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Okay, so... Once I get this the first part going, it'll be a little bit more easy to see. This the first part's a little awkward, um, so I go up through this little smile area here. I'm gonna follow it around the eyebrow and go down through a smile, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to this little eyebrow area, okay? You'll start to see the pattern coming up, okay? Now I'm just being loose. I'm not pulling it very tight. Now I want to follow this smile around. I'm gonna go up through this eyebrow and then I'm gonna go back through this little smile. Okay, you see that? Can you start to see the pattern that's happening? Okay, now I'm gonna follow this eyebrow and I'm gonna go down through this smile. I'm gonna go back to what I just did, that, um, uh, that eyebrow. Okay, then I go around this right here, and then up through this the uh, um, the eyebrow, and then um, we're gonna go up through the smile. Okay, do you see how it's starting to look like Christmas candy here? Okay, that that zigzag where it goes back on itself and it touches itself. Does that make sense? So what that's doing is it's, it's retaining it stretchy and I'm not actually seeing it on this side. See, cause I'm going through this side of these stitches 
And so even with the other color, I can do that. So let's say you wanted, you can use this even in a contrasting yarn. Say you said, okay, well now, now I'm ready to, like maybe you're doing a duplicate stitch and you're making letters on this side or something. Um, you could go through the back of the reverse stockinette. So this is the same thing. So like if I have stockinette here, then I would just be working it the same way on the back of a stockinette piece. So, and then I would jump over to the front um, and start working on my stitch out here. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to make a stitch on the top. You know, I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to make a V and then I'm going to just go back in. I'm going to do a little, um, like maybe I'm making, making a little kid, uh, making a face. And so I've done like a little, a little, um, cat nose or something. So see how I can make that appear. And then maybe I jump over here and um, and I start working this stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna follow this around. I'm gonna go back. Yeah, and then follow this around. It actually can be kind of fun. I'm like, oh, what can I do now? You know, it's like play around, make a stockinette swatch and um, and just play around with it. So let's see how I can do this. And then now maybe I wanna come on the other side again and come up through the front, you know, and then work something over here. So see how that happens? And I can make something. So like you can't see that color there, right? Isn't that cool? So that's how that works. You just wind it around like that. And um, <clears throat> and then that's that stitch there. Um, let me get a, um, okay, this would be for a, um, there we go. Uh, this would be for a uh, ribbing. Let me see if I can get this. Did you guys like that? Was it helpful? Give me some love emojis or, <laughs> or write it down. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Sorry. Um, going back. Lauren says a different color helps. Can you show it with the same color so we can show how it blends in? Well, I, I think I might have answered that, how you can see how it would blend in because, like, you can't even see it here. I was just, I was going too far over. It was, it was, um. Anyway, I was just going too far over on the last sample, but when you're hitting it on the back, you can see how it how it doesn't show. This one was on purpose, and then these were to hide. Does that make sense? So that's that that shows you how it would blend up. It's just really hard to show on camera here. Um, <clears throat> so um, with um, with stitches, um, you can. Um, you can go um, along the sides of the, um, you can go along the sides of a column and work your way through, you know, on a column of stitches and it hides. So I just kind of go up through here and, um, you know, go through there like that and hide my stitches up the column. And go along even if like this is like a three by one or one by three so like where I have a column of knit stitches and then a whole bunch of pearls and you're not really sure <laughs> what to do um, or actually that this is the right side here so I've got three knit uh, stitches columns and then a row of pearl and so I'm just putting like a yarn on the back side and then this is where we go into the sides of the stitch so we've got the V you go all the way up the V and start going through like this. And then you can come down on itself and then do the same thing again and go straight back down and work itself um, right on top and it's gonna be the same color. And so it just, it fits right in and then you don't see it from the front here. You know, I saw that one because this is really stretched out. <laughs> this is a totally different type. I was using this for um, 
this was a, a, this is a t-shirt yarn so it's a completely different kind of thing so um, but you would use that technique on say this one where you have a ribbing here and you want to hide it so let's do that here this is helpful thank you I'm so glad you guys are enjoying it so I have this edging here and I'm gonna go ahead and weave in this tail so I'm just gonna go through the back of this column of uh, knit stitches which there's only a few you know actually oh that's the side where that had changed okay so just gonna go into that column there and then go back up through the side of it it's really hard to see in this Bernat blanket which is actually nice because it, it hides really well but you just don't want it to get super bulky on you and then once you've got it woven in there um, you can cut it this one's really not going to go anywhere especially the kind of yarn it is um, if you've got it back up on itself and so and you want you don't want to cut it super short because then that can pop out because um, it'll kind of work out and you can tug on it and make sure and so then it's kind of back down into there um, and then you can snip it once you know it's kind of worked in you can even block it first and then finish weaving your tail like you can weave in your tails and then block but let let the let this part hang and wait for um, for that to be finished so anyway so that's that one and um, uh, oh that one you can see because I was really messing with it <laughs> I was trying to demonstrate a different thing uh, so let's let's pull that out and if you don't like it I mean it's just as simple as just going back through and, and pulling it out unless you've um, woven back on top of it Yeah, you don't want bumps in your blanket, Chris. Um, yeah, on the stocking net portions, if you will use this technique, um, you won't have those bumps because it'll also retain its stretchiness. Um, you know, and of course, if you're just joining me, I was just demonstrating how if you wanted to show something on the front side, you could use this technique to kind of jump over and not have these weird long floats. Um, so, you can get that sort of intarsia look without actually, like if you only have very sparse um, colors to pop in, you don't necessarily need to worry about doing something having a bunch of floats. You can use the duplicate stitch and then on the back side in between the stitch, oh, that's because I did this on the front. That's why that's not working, Kristen. Um, use the duplicate stitch. If you need a video on the duplicate stitch, what that is is it's um, working yarn on top of the knitting and um, making V's and stuff to create letters and whatever else that you want to do. So, um, but you can you can see how um, I could just keep going, and um, I could even like go to the front and work in a whole line of stuff, and then jump over to another area six inches over, and then work in another line. You just need to have a long enough tail. Okay, that's so that's all it is. Okay, so um, let me get set back up here. Doo -doo -doo. Um, <clears throat> I've got to show you something real quick. So tonight is the ending for this giveaway. This is the last day. Um, it's the this is how the kit comes. This is the um, <clears throat> Mary Maxim giveaway. The painted tiles wrap. You get the pattern. Doo -doo -doo. This this pattern here with the diagram and everything, and the five balls of yarn. And um, you have to sign up um, on goodknitkisses.com and go to the blog and go to the Painted Tiles Wrap blog. Um, they just mentioned me in their newsletter today, which is really cool. I'm, that's that's really sweet. <laughs> so they've got a um, they've got a blog um, on it, and I'll put the link to the blog. I just uh, there it goes. There's the post. And um, anyway, but you, if you go to my website, 
go underneath where I have the video embedded and then click on the giveaway and um, we'll have to add that link in. But tonight at 11.59 um, p.m. Central Standard Time is when that giveaway ends. Um, and I've got the video on how to make the mitered square starting this off and also how to join up the next side and start making the triangle. And so and now, of course, this needs to be blocked. But <laughs> so but it also works where it like it joins the um, the next square, the next square, and then you start making triangles and stuff. So that's what this yarn is here. And, um, and it is a roving yarn. Anyway, so that's it for today. Tomorrow is the crochet day. We're going to work on um, this sample here. And what yarn? What is this? Let's see. I did I'm trying to remember what hook to tell you. If you want to crochet with me tomorrow, it is an eight millimeter size USL hook. And I use the um, Bernat Softy Chunky just because it's going to work up really fast. You could even um, work up tomorrow if you wanted to a scarf in this because it's really fast. We'll just do um, a three pattern repeat and uh, keep going and make you a nice springy scarf. Um, the color on this is, if you're interested, is called Grass. It's the Bernat Softy Chunky. And um, anyway, that'll be fun. So I hope you guys have a great day. Good luck in the contest. I will make the announcement on Friday on YouTube. And the YouTube announcement. <laughs> so go to good Nick, uh, go to youtube.com slash goodnickkisses. Click on to subscribe to me. Then you can be part of it. Um, we're doing a closed captioning thing. I decided yesterday. Um, so if you want to do super chat and join me, anything you contribute to a super chat with me on YouTube is going to go to closed captions for people who need that and um, I think it's a great way to contribute and it'll go directly to good Knit kisses the only thing is is I only earn about 70% uh, of that so 30% goes to YouTube but every part of what I earn in a super chat is going to go towards that so if you want to contribute be sure and join me you'll also hear the winners at the end all right so I hope you have a great day happy knitting and crochet bye everyone